So as of now, we spoke of two laws, Charles' law and Boyle's law. And we saw that these laws both helped us explain exactly how gas molecules interact and function on a macroscopic level. Now we're going to look at a third law called Avogadro's law, and we're going to see how this law also helps us gain more intuition about the interactions of gas molecules on a macroscopic level. So let's look at the conditions under which this law holds. So this law will only work when our pressure and temperature are both held constant. And what this law tells us is that volume is directly proportional to the number of moles. And what that means, if these guys are held constant, the only way we can increase our volume of our system is to add more gas, or to add more moles of gas. Now, if we multiply this side by some constant, this we set equal, and our n comes to this side, we get the following relation. Volume over n, our number of moles, equals a constant. Now, this constant which we will see next when we learn about the ideal gas law, depends on temperature and pressure. In other words, if our pressure and temperature are the same, then our constant will always be the same. But if we increase or decrease our temperature or pressure, our constant will, always cha will also change. So that brings up an interesting relation. That basically means as long as our pressure and temperature are the same, this will always be, to, be true for any volume or for any number of moles. This will always be our constant. And we'll see why this is important in part D. Let's look at C for a second. It's important to mention that experimental results show that at zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure, one mole of any gas, any gas whatsoever, will always correspond to 22.4 liters. And that's because, according to our kinetic molecular theory, volume of gas is zero. It's assumed to be zero. And so it doesn't matter what type of gas you use, if it's large or small, it will have a volume of 22.4 liters. Now, this is according to experimental results. Once again, something we observe experimentally, we turn into a theory, and that's where our assumptions from our kinetic theory came. But let's look at part D. So earlier I said that for any given temperature and pressure, as long as they are held constant at that same temperature and pressure, our constant will always be the same. So suppose that's our case. Suppose I have a system under which I have constant temperature and pressure. Now suppose I have a balloon at some volume 1 and some volume 2. And suppose I have three molecules or three moles of my gas inside my balloon. What if I increase the number of moles to six moles? What will happen to my volume? Well suppose I take a balloon and I put a liter of water into my balloon. It's going to fill up to a certain volume. Suppose I put one more liter of water into my balloon. Well, it's going to take up twice as much volume because we're assuming, of course, that temperature and pressure are the same. So our law, Avogadro's law, becomes the following. This law holds for two sets of different conditions under which temperature and pressure is held the same. So for one condition, for one volume and one mole, this guy equals to the second condition, V2 over N2. The same thing, the same result we saw in Charles' law and also in Boyle's law, except in Boyle's law it was P times V equals P2 times V2. Now this guy is equal to the constant because remember, no matter what volume or number of moles we're talking about, as long as this is true, our constant will be the same. So both this guy and this guy equals the same constant. Now this formula can be applied in many different examples. Let's see one, an easy one, in part E. Suppose I'm given that for three moles, my volume is 22 liters. Now suppose my second volume, my second condition, is 44 liters. What is my mole? Well, I basically plug in my values, 22 over 3 equals 44 over N2. 
I solve for n, and I find 6. That's exactly how I use Avogadro's law to solve problems. So now let's explain Avogadro's law, a macroscale concept, using a microscale concept, or the kinetic theory, or the kinetic molecular theory. Now, kinetic theory explains Avogadro's law in the following way. Now, if temperature and pressure is to remain constant, an increase in the number of moles will increase volume. In other words, if our kinetic energy or average kinetic energy of our molecules is to remain the same, and the pressure or the force per unit area exerted by or on the walls of my container is to remain the same, that means when we increase the number of moles, we also increase the number of molecules hitting the walls. And that means the only way to keep these two guys constant is if we increase the volume. And that's exactly how our kinetic theory explains Avogadro's law. Now once again to recap, kinetic theory explains microscopic concepts. It explains how two individual gas molecules interact. The fact that their volume is so small that it's assumed to be zero. The fact that individual molecules travel at very high speeds, about a thousand miles per hour. Now, these laws, Avogadro's, Charles, and Boyle's law, all explain macroscopic concepts. Things that you could see and feel and hear. For example, a balloon popping when you're uh, putting pressure on it or a balloon inflating when you're putting in more moles. Things like that are explained by these three laws. Next, we're going to look at an overall law called the ideal gas law, which incorporates all three laws.